Hey everybody, hope you guys are healthy and safe. So I have here the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the standard iPhone 13. I actually have all four models of the new iPhone 13s, but because the Pro Max and the Pro have the exact same camera and the 13 and the 13 mini have the exact same cameras, I don't need to take all four iPhones out to do a camera test. Just taking two is enough. So in today's video, I'm gonna compare these two iPhone cameras against, in my opinion, the two best Android cameras on the market right now, the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra. So I'm gonna take all four of these phones outside for kind of like my usual day in the life vlog. I'm probably gonna regret it because it is hot as hell right now today, but hey, it is what it is. But before I step out, I'm gonna test some samples in here because right now the lighting condition is actually pretty harsh. And you guys know me, man, when I do my camera test, I wanna test in harsh, lighting conditions, so against really harsh backlight or maybe when it gets really dark. There's really no point in testing cameras in a perfectly well-lit environment. Any phone, even a $200 phone can do a good job there. So without further ado, let's begin. So as you can see, this is a really harsh lighting condition because there's so much harsh light coming in that right now if I put my hand here, you can't even see my hand properly. My camera can't even find the proper balance. We'll see how these smartphones uh, handle the scene. So we'll start with the main camera of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Apologies if you're seeing lines on the screen. That's just the camera shutter speed. You will not see that in real life. Okay, so this main camera and then ultra wide angle camera. And now we switch to the iPhone 13. So the iPhone 13's main camera has a smaller image sensor size than the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And also the ultra wide angle camera has a slower aperture. Now we have the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. One next. Galaxy S21 Ultra. Okay, next up, zoom shot. So the iPhone 13 Pro Max has a 12 megapixel Televo zoom lens that can do three times optical zoom. And it can go up to 15 times digital zoom this year. So for an iPhone, this is a pretty good zoom. So we have a 3X and then we'll go up to, let's do 10, 15, you know, 10 seems like a happy medium. Okay, so I'm not even gonna bother testing the iPhone 13 in this zoom test because it has no zoom lens at all. So that means any zoom is digital zoom and you can only go up to 5x. So using this phone, it, it, I mean, it doesn't even deserve to be in this test. Okay, Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra 3x, 10x. Galaxy S21 Ultra 3x, 10x. Okay, so right now this is a selfie camera footage with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. I'm just gonna film some selfie footage right now with all four phones while I'm packing up. And I believe the selfie cameras for all four iPhones are exactly the same, so that means the footage here should be exactly the same as the iPhone 13 too, but I'll film it anyway. Yeah, so now this is an iPhone 13 footage. It should look identical to the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Now one of the cool things with the new iPhones this year and a complete game changer for me is cinematic mode. What it is, it is basically portrait mode for videos and it works with the selfie camera and the main camera. It looks better on the main camera. I'll show you guys how it looks on the selfie camera first. Okay, here it is, cinematic mode with the front facing camera of the iPhone 13. So you see there's a little bit of blur around me. I mean, yeah, if you are a camera enthusiast and a hardcore cinematographer, you might say, this looks really fake, it doesn't look natural. But to be honest, this is good enough for a lot of people and it really adds a cinematic vibe to videos. And like I said, it looks even better with the main camera, which I'll show you soon. Okay, now this is the front-facing camera of the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. I'm noticing the color of the background looks a little bit weird right now. The lights are a little bit blown out too. It's because this wall is painted green, so I guess when light reflects off of it, it might give off a real shade if your camera's like AI aren't smart enough to fix white balance. But okay, now this is the Galaxy S21 Ultra selfie footage. It looks pretty good. Okay, we have another really harsh lighting condition right now. The sun is shining directly at me and this part of the street is drenched in shadow. So let's do a camera test here.
Okay, so now you're watching main camera footage of the iPhone 13 Pro Max. So one of the new features of the iPhone Pro cameras this year is macro mode, and macro mode works in video too. Unfortunately, it does not work like once you've begun recording with a normal lens, you have to stop recording to kick in. So you see right now, I can't focus any closer. But you see now, I can focus closer because I, I stopped and basically started a new clip. So this is macro mode on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. And this is standard iPhone 13 footage. You see, it, it cannot get any closer. Okay, so this is the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra's macro mode. It also works for video. But on the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra, you have to turn it on manually. It doesn't kick in automatically like the iPhone. Okay, this is Galaxy S21 camera. The S21 Ultra actually cannot shoot macro mode in video, so I cannot get any closer. I can do it with still photos though. So one of the reasons I think the iPhones have always been the best video camera is because it allows really smooth transition between lenses. So I can go ultra wide, zoom in, go ultra wide, zoom in. And I can do this footage in the middle of a pan. Like I'm zooming out as I'm panning to make the video footage a little bit more dynamic. Okay, so this is the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I'm gonna try the same movement. It's actually not bad. Still a little bit of a stutter. Okay, so earlier I mentioned cinematic mode is even better on the main camera. Now you're watching cinematic mode on the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Should be seeing a little bit of natural bokeh behind me. And the cool thing is you can adjust all of this in real time or after the shot. So let's say I'm finished with this clip. I thought the blur was a little bit too strong. I can dial it down. I can turn it off completely. Or I can change focus point to focus on the tree instead of my face. Okay, now this is the main camera footage with the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra. Now because the Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra has a large image sensor size, you still get a little bit of natural bokeh. But the bokeh really is only noticeable when I'm closer to the lens. If I'm using a selfie stick and I hold it further, there would be no bokeh now. Whereas with cinematic mode on an iPhone, you can still get that artificial blur if you want. Okay, now this is main camera footage of the Galaxy S21 Ultra. There should still be a little bit of natural bokeh if I bring it closer to my face because this is also a relatively large image sensor. If I push out further out, it should be a little bit more flat. It doesn't have that background blur. Okay, now this is iPhone 13 Pro Max ultra wide angle footage. iPhone 13 Pro Max. So during the day, the footage between the iPhone 13 Pro Max and the iPhone 13 for ultra wide should be very similar. But at night, you'll be able to see a difference. Okay, now this is standard iPhone 13 ultra wide camera. So as I said, the ultra wide angle camera here has a slower aperture than the 13 Pro Max. Okay, now this is ultra wide angle footage with the Xiaomi Mi 11 ultra ultra wide angle footage ultra wide angle camera okay this is now ultra wide angle camera with the galaxy s21 ultra so galaxy s21 ultra ultra wide camera So in cinematic mode, you can do tricks like changing focus from background to foreground, back to background, back to foreground.
main camera footage with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. iPhone 13 Pro Max. Main camera footage with the standard iPhone 13. Standard iPhone 13. Okay, so this is main camera footage with the Mi 11 Ultra. Main camera footage with the Mi 11 Ultra. 21 Ultra, main camera footage, Galaxy S21 Ultra. Okay, so you see in low light situations, you can see the iPhone 13 Pro Max is ultra wide, pulls in more light and has less noise than the standard iPhone 13 because the Pro Max ultra wide has a wider aperture. Okay, I've examined all the photos and videos on the monitor now, and I think in my opinion, the iPhones, particularly the Pro Max still has the best video camera. It has the most fluid zooming. It finds balance the best. And um, lighting seems to be really good too. As for taking photos with the main camera, it's really too close to call. It really depends on what you like. I think I'm partial towards the Galaxy S21 Ultra, but then for the ultra wide camera, I think the Mi 11 into Ultra, the dog. ultra wide consistently pulled in the best photo and video too. It's uh, particularly during the day, maybe not so much at night. So kind of each phone trade wins and obviously the weakest camera system here is the standard iPhone 13 because it doesn't have a zoom. But to me though, cinematic mode is a game changer. I, I really love that artificial bokeh, you know, you know, just because I think it adds a little bit of depth. Let me try it right now in low light. Okay, so right now there's a cinematic mode in low light situations. I don't know how it looks, but during the day, it looks good enough for me to use as a phone for B-roll, for video footage. You know, I'm not the only YouTuber. Several other YouTubers shoot some of the videos with an iPhone and the iPhone 13 just increased the lead. But um, the Galaxy S21 Ultra and the Mi 11 Ultra is obviously much better at zooming. So yeah, that's about it for this video. I'm gonna have a lot more content coming up, including a full review of the iPhone 13 mini and the iPhone 13 Pro and just more versus videos too. So please stay tuned and if you are interested in more content, content like this, please consider subscribing to my channel or follow me on Instagram at Ben's Gadget Reviews. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.